So Count Dooku is the head of state of the Confederacy of Independent Systems, and during the Battle of Coruscant, he's killed by Jedi Knight Anakin Skywalker. Seemingly, he's succeeded by General Grievous, but how exactly does he fit into the equation of the Separatist political system, and was this actually a coup? I'm Colin, and this is Sci-Fi Deep Dive. Remember, if you enjoyed this video, to head down below and hit that subscribe button. So, Count Dooku was the legitimate head of state of the CIS. He had served as their leader from the early meetings surrounding the possibility of secession from the Republic to the meetings on Geonosis before the start of the war, and had led the Separatist Senate during many of their delegations, often serving the same role that Palpatine served within the Republic Senate. And Count Dooku obviously also led the military machine of the CIS, commanding the droid forces and serving as both a military and political leader of the CIS, but his death brings a lot of things into question. He is killed during the Battle of Coruscant during an engagement with Jedi Knight Anakin Skywalker. Count Dooku likely had a rightful line of succession, or some sort of element in play that should have replaced him with a different political leader, but instead it seems like the leadership role has fallen to a military leader, General Grievous, who seems to have no interest in the political side of the CIS. So. What exactly happened here? Well, it's likely that a lot of confusion surrounded Count Dooku's death. After all, it was in the chaos of battle, in one of the most chaotic battles of the war, the Battle of Coruscant. There was likely confusing and conflicting reports right after the engagement, and it probably took a few days for things to really be sort of realized that Count Dooku had died and that those reports were legitimate. By that point, Separatist leaders had already gathered on Utapau and had been dispatched by General Grievous, who had taken command of the droid army. And in a government, most of the power lies with the military. When it comes down to brute force, the military has the most capabilities. So whoever controls the military can theoretically control the government, and that's the position that Grievous is in now, in control of the droid army, which is absolutely massive. So it's likely that Grievous, after he took control of the droid army, used this to sort of strong arm a position of leadership within the Separatist Council, and sort of position the Separatist Council to be under his command, allowing him to take a sort of de facto head of state role for the final weeks of the war. Grievous's more volatile nature was a problem for the Republic on top of that, because while Count Dooku could theoretically have been reasoned with and could have come to a sort of reasonable conclusion to the end of the war, Grievous was much less likely to settle for anything less than total defeat of one side or the other. This meant that the Republic would have to continue the war until Grievous's death, which did happen during the Battle of Utapau. But if what Grievous did was a coup, and from my perspective this does look like a very subtle coup, what was the ramifications of this action. After all, the war was just a few weeks from an end, and the Battle of Utapau basically took Grievous out of the equation, so exactly what role did this coup actually serve? Well, assuming that Grievous didn't know he was going to die in a few days after Count Dooku's death, it's likely that Grievous thought he could have led droid forces on even perhaps past the collapse of the CIS, leading a droid resistance somewhere in the galaxy, but that's just speculation. Ultimately, Grievous had taken control of the droid army, or what was left of it, and while he did have to work with the Separatist Council, he had a much better bargaining position being the commander-in-chief of the droid army. But what about the Separatist Council? Where do they come into this? Because they ultimately hold a lot of the power within the Separatist government. The Separatist Council is a group of corporations that were sort of leading the Separatist military, funding the Separatist military, and maintaining the Separatist military. Well, they sort of serve more like a cabinet than anything else, but it's clear that during those final hours, especially after Grievous's death, the Separatist Council was calling some of the shots. And we know that throughout the war, members of the Separatist Council did make important strategic decisions but they were generally under the leadership of one head of state or another, be it Dooku or Grievous. But at the end of the day, all Grievous's sort of bid for power did was prolong the war by a few more days. The CIS was ultimately doomed at this point, and no change of leadership or second wind could have actually saved the now doomed faction. As their political system starts to unravel and their military becomes more and more frail, as Republic troops push deeper into Separatist territory, their nation is going to start to fall apart, and the end of the war is at hand. 
But as Grievous took control of droid forces during the final days of the Clone Wars, he did have to contend with the Separatist Council, which is a fairly capable political entity of its own. And if you'd like to learn more about the Separatist Council and the role they played within the Confederacy, I'll leave a link up here to my video on that. And I'd like you to let me know down in the comments whether you think what Grievous did actually was a coup, or do you think there was some legitimate line of succession stuff here? Or do you think it was just confusion and basically nobody has any idea who's supposed to be in charge? And if you have anything else like to see me cover in Star Wars, you can let me know down below in the comments. Last but not least, if you enjoyed this video, head down below, hit the like button, the subscribe button, and the bell icon so you get notified when I upload new videos. So for Sci-Fi Deep Dive, I'm Colin, and I will see you next time.